The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. I'll be discussing loyalty this morning. As we are talking about the local church, one very important ingredient that we need is to be loyal. We start from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 19 and 20. 1 Thessalonians 2, 19 and 20. For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes? Now, every purposeful life, every good life, and every purposeful life is led with the end in view. The apostle Paul was not just working. At a point in time, he had to go back to Jerusalem to let the elders there or the leaders of the church vet his message. And he said, so that he may not run in vain. So he always had the end in view. So he was not racing or boxing like throwing his punches into the air. He had the target in view. Now he's saying that for what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of the Lord, that the Lord Jesus, when he comes, at the end of the day, what we will glory in. So he was mindful of that. As he was working, he was still thinking of the end, the resource. Then he says, is it not you pointing to the members of the church in Thessalonica? Indeed, you are our glory and our joy. You see, the people purchased by the blood of Christ who join our church, including all of us, are God's special possession because of the blood. We have become God's special possession. If they are God's special possession, then they should be our greatest treasure. People who come to church and join our fraternity, they come through the blood, they come through the door, the Lord Jesus Christ, and they are his treasured Possession, special possession. And I'm saying that if they are his special possession, then they should be our greatest treasure. It is their gifts, their talents, their wisdom and knowledge. It is from their treasury that we advance the kingdom of God. It is in their strength we find strength. Now that I've come to stand here to minister, if you were not there, who was I going to minister to? Chairs? Benches? It is in their strength that we find strength. It is this body of people in our fraternity we call the Church of Pentecost. This body of people who come to be saved are the people we call the Church of Pentecost. The Church of Pentecost, therefore, is and should be our greatest treasure. And we need to love her and hold her tight with both hands. 
especially those of us who are ministers. Every one of us should be deeply respected. Every member of the church should be deeply respected and loved. Some may not be clergymen like us, but they play supportive leadership roles to our ministries and the ministry of the Church of Pentecost. Every one of us should be respected and deeply loved. First Chronicles 11, please. I'll take 9 and 10. First Chronicles 11, 9 and 10. And David became more and more powerful because the Lord Almighty was with him. That is understandable. And he should have been okay. And David became more and more powerful because the Lord Almighty was with him. But look at the verse 10, the verse following. These were the chiefs of David's mighty warriors. They, together with all Israel, gave his kingship strong support to extend it over the whole land as the Lord had promised. So, the verse 9 is saying that David became powerful because the Lord was with him. But it didn't end there. Then the writer brings other people who also made him powerful. These were the chiefs of David's mighty men. He listed them later. But it is not so important. What is important is what has been said about them. They, together with how many of the Israelites? All. All. Gave his kingship strong support to extend it over the whole land as the Lord had promised. So if his dynasty stood and David became a great king, God was with him, but he didn't achieve that alone. Some people and all Israel gave him strong support. Great leaders do not succeed alone. Behind them have been a support team. David was a great king, not because he was a special man or a superman, no. The scriptures say, God was with him, and also there were people who supported him. In fact, the Bible says they gave his kingdom great support. They gave. And the giving was dependent on them. So what they gave came from them. They could have withheld it. But once they gave, then they supported his kingdom. People talk about leaders because the leader is the face of the institution. But behind any good leader is a team of leaders playing their supportive roles. I shall take all of us and your subordinates as supporting leaders in the Church of Pentecost. Leaders supporting the executive council to execute its mandate. In our quest to reposition the local church, one thing that is required of supporting leaders and of all of us and every member of the Church of Pentecost is love for the church. You can't save that which you do not love. We need to have strong love for the church. The church, the body called the Church of Pentecost. I mean to keep faith with the very church that has called you into ministry. We shall now turn to look at the pattern of establishing the local church in the New Testament. The pattern of establishing the local church in the New Testament. Acts chapter 14, verse 21. Acts 14, 21 through 23. They preached the gospel in that city and won a large number of disciples. They, 
the apostles preached the gospel, and they won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. So they want a lot of people, the Bible calls them disciples. Disciples of who? Disciples of Christ. People who have come to learn of Christ and to be like him. And then the Bible says that before the apostles moved on, they appointed elders to man these disciples. So in the New Testament, we establish the, the local church by appointing leaders to man the disciples. Titus 1, 5. The reason I left you in Crete was that you might put in order what was left unfinished and appoint elders in every town as I direct you. As 2017, from Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus for the elders of the church. And so the elders are appointed as leaders over the local church. And we need to respect them. We need to close the gap between the clergy and the officership. Because every one of them play a role in making the Church of Pentecost great. And by extension, the name of Jesus be glorified. But when you come to Acts chapter 6, 1 Timothy 3, Titus 1, the whole chapter, you see that it is in the local church, not only elders lead the church, there is a group called the Dickens and the Dickenesses. Then when you come to Romans 12, Romans 12 reveals that there are other gifts and talents that other people come on board with to help manage the local church. Shall we turn to Romans 12, verse 6, please? Romans 12, 6 to 8. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with faith. Now, when we came, some people have prophesied. At the local church, some people too, as a bit this grace. Now, let's move on. If it is seven, then serve. How many of the pastors here, how many of the area heads got involved in the cleaning of this place this morning? Shall I see by hand any area head that got involved in the cleaning of this place this morning? How many executive members got involved in the cleaning of this place this morning? Me, I won't ask myself. I, I didn't even think about it. How many of the pastors here got involved, apart from the ministerial students, with the cleaning of this place this morning? How many of our retired ministers managed to come up and clean the place? So those of us who are preachers and those who clean and sweep in the presence of God, who is greater? Who is greater? If it is seven, then let them say, these are people in the local church, when we are taking offerings, they fold their arms. Because most of them are not such group, they don't have to give. But don't despise them. They are serving their Lord. They are helping the Church of Pentecost to advance. Hmm. If it is teaching, then teach. 
If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. Now, sometimes we think that the people who are very good in church are those who can preach. See, for, for many of us, if we had not even been ministers, we would have been linguists in the chief's palace because that is who we, God has made us here, here Kasa. So the fact that somebody can preach well doesn't mean anything. What means and what counts is the new creation and godliness. So you may have some elders who may not be great teachers. Don't despise them. You will need them to accompany you to solve problems. Because they are people of wisdom. They come with great encouragement. You will need them. Everyone is supporting the Church of Pentecost. Don't despise anyone. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. All these gifts that our brothers come on board with and talents, because we don't have the gift of encouragement. Do we have? No. What about the gift, the spiritual gift of giving? What about these young men who are playing the instruments? Where is their place in scripture? But they all come on board. What about the VOP? They all support the ministry of the Church of Pentecost just to make it great. So we come with gifts, we come with talents, natural and spiritual, just to support the, the work of the Church of Pentecost. You don't necessarily have to be a pastor. And I'm always saying that we don't even have to bring all the good ones into ministry. We need to strategically leave some of them in the local church so that when the pastors come, they will help them build the church. They will help them build the church. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7, please. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. For the common good. Whose common good? The common good of the Church of Pentecost. The common good of the body we call the Church of Pentecost. To each one of us, and it is each, every one of us is useful in the Church of God. Useful. Even the elder who sometimes disturbs you. You see, God sometimes, because of who you are, will intentionally raise an elder who will be checking you. So you can make it to heaven. So you will not, you not temper with the church's fans. Watch out for them and thank God for their lives. You watch out for them. Don't fight those people. See, sometimes when you want to touch the untouchable, you remember that, hey, this elder. You see, so God has planted the elder for you. Hmm. Don't, don't fight anybody in the system. Everyone is useful. All of us together, with our officers and members, our co-workers in the Lord's vineyard, all of us are supporting leaders have been given a trust which we need to effectively execute at all levels. One thing that is required of all of us and of all supporting leaders and of all members of a body is loyalty. That the supporting leader should be loyal to the trust and the task. Now the trust and the task, what we have been trusted with and the task, you ought to be loyal to it. A loyal person will not withdraw from you. No. No matter the circumstances, no matter the situation you are in or he is in. When we say someone is loyal, we are saying that somebody is faithful. But loyalty is, goes further than faithfulness. We are saying that a loyal person will not withdraw from you, no matter the circumstances. No matter the situation he or she is in, or you are in. So they will not withdraw from you when you are sick. They are loyal to you. They will not withdraw from you 
when you become poor, they are loyal to you. The reason why Uriah died was simple. David's letter read like this. Place him at where the, the battle is fierce and withdraw from him. Now, it was the withdrawal of the people from him that killed him. Because as an army, they should have been fighting together, supporting one another. But he says that place him at where the battle is fiercest. The man is inexperienced to be in front there. But he's saying to the commanders, withdraw from him. So they withdrew from him, and Uriah was killed. Don't withdraw from us. Don't run away from us when the battle gets tough and jump onto the social media and, and tell the whole world, these people. Meanwhile, you are a pastor. Don't withdraw from us. Don't. My father used to be very rich. In those days, even his nephews, in our tradition, or the Akan tradition, especially the Ashantis. Those days, the nephew is rated even higher than the son. The nephews used to call him chief. You know why they call him chief? Like Nigeria chief, when he was rich. But somehow, during the revolution, my dad fell from grace to grass. Everything he had, was taken away from him. Then with my own years, this nephew that we used to stay with, he came back to the house, and then when he was inquiring of my dad where he was, he asked this other family member, Ujaf Oho. Now from chief straight to Ujaf. Now when he was rich, they called him chief. Now that he doesn't have money, this same person has changed the name to Ujaf. This is this loyalty. Ujaf. In the heart of the word loyal or loyalty is the word faithful. So let me jump to concentrate on loyalty. Loyalty means faithful to one's sovereign government or state. And in this instance, faith, our state, our sovereign, our government is the Church of Pentecost. Faithful to one's oath and commitment or obligation to one's charge. We need to be faithful as ministers to our oath. Let me just remind you of some of the things we said. The day you were being ordained as a minister. So I will take myself for the minister. I'm going to be ordained. And I require you in the presence of God and of the Holy Spirit. And in the presence of this congregation to answer the following questions. Are your motives for entering into the ministry, so far as you know, in your own heart, zeal for the glory of God, love for the Lord Jesus Christ, obedience to the Holy Spirit, and a desire for the salvation of mankind? Now, so you cannot go like a man and not go running after the salvation of people. Then you responded, yes, they are. Let's move on. Do you reaffirm your belief in the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith as contained in the tenets of the church, the church of Pentecost? So I don't expect you to, after saying yes to this, go and then rise against the church. Even our practices, I don't expect you. And do you approve of the worship of the church? You see young men who join the church, and everything we do, they are criticizing. Then why? Then go and join another church. 
because we said, do you approve of the worship of the church? And the pastor said, yes, I do. We can improve on what we have. But the same person who has said, yes, I do, cannot turn around and be attacking everything we do. As if there's a church somewhere that is a golden church. Praise God. Right. Yeah. 